Hi everyone, my name is Abashi and I'm reporting for First Updates Now. And with me here, I have Team 7172 Technical Difficulties all the way from Texas. They competed at the MTI, super successful, ranked really high in qualifications, and then they were actually the first pick of the winning alliance, took it the whole way, 2-0 every single round. And just an amazing team. We're going to learn a lot about them coming up here on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. Apply the skills you gain as a FIRST student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in FIRST because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. All right, Sophie, let's start with your drivetrain. You know, I remember seeing your guys' robot in your first competitions around November, December, and the first thing I noticed was just how zippy you guys were on the field, never stopping, just always moving. Can you walk us through your drivetrain and some design decisions you made throughout the year? Uh, yeah, so uh, a big concept for this entire robot was we were going to be light and we were going to be fast. Um, so we designed our, our drivetrain to do just that. So we use Mechanum, go build a Mechanum wheels, um, do you want to know about Butterfly? Yeah, sure. Um, so we were light and we were fast until we got bullied around on the shared hub at one of our competitions. And we said, okay, we got we to be able to play against that. And so we made it heavy, fast, and torquey all at the same time. So we took our existing uh, drivetrain just as it is. We didn't change it at all. We implemented our Butterfly modules, which deploy into the ground whenever we want them. So we have the exact same zippy, fast. We don't lose any speed. doesn't affect our insane autonomous and whenever uh, someone wants to push us around on shared hub we, pu we push them back. Yeah, no, that's really impressive. And, you know, uh, I think your drivetrain has just been super consistent for you guys this entire year, and that's something teams definitely need. Did you guys consider anything like a suspension or a wide or six-wheel drive or anything like that at the beginning of the season, or was it just Mechanum the whole way through? It, it was Mechanum the whole way through. I mean, we started with chain, and then the chain got loose, and we got tired of that, so we, we just went to gears. That was the only change on the Mechanums. Awesome, yeah. I mean, if it's working, you know, don't fix it. Um, yeah, let's go on to your intake. Uh, I think your guys' intake must be one of the most most like not complex but in the sense that it's just it's so like thorough and you guys have put so much time into making sure that it picks up freight instantly you know a lot of teams say touch it own it but I think you guys really own that whole motto right anytime you guys see a freight on the field it just looks like it t transports into your robot so walk us through that right how is your intake so special yeah so well, when we saw what the game elements were, immediately we knew that we were going to model it after the best intake we saw in Rover Ruckus. Um, and so, I think it was... Data Force. I, Data Force? Okay, I don't want to confuse them with Delta Force. Um, and, uh, and so we modeled it after them. We actually got this surgical tubing from them. Um, I mean, that, that was it. The sizing went through a few iterations, but this intake was pretty straightforward. We zoomed into the robot reveal, took tons of photos, um, and did as much as we can to uh, copy paste. Yeah, and you know, let's uh, talk about a, c a couple of the different like degrees of freedom you guys have in your intake. It's not just like, yeah, your intake definitely folds down and folds up and goes the other way, so you guys can do both sides. But what about that rotation, right? Like, how much how much does it help you guys? Why do you have it there? You know, what's behind it? So the rotation of our intake arm is huge. We went through a, a few different concepts. We struggled uh, to decide between an intake arm that flipped and a dual intake, and we actually settled on this because we thought it'd be a lot simpler and with dual intakes you can have issues where they both deploy and you risk getting too frayed, getting them stuck, so much complexity. Um, there are so many degrees of freedom on this. Um, so the intake arm itself rotates like this. Our turret, our intake rotates with the turret which there's a servo down in here. Um, the motor is inside of the channel which goes up uh, through an axle, bevel gears, chain sprocket, I mean, it's it's complex, but kind of really simple at the same time. Yeah, and let's talk about your transfer mechanism. I mean, I don't think I've seen a single team like you guys this year that transfers in the same way. So can you sh tell other teams about exactly how you do it? Um, so it's actually really simple. So we intake, and uh, we knew we need to find a way to have it drop into our scoring uh, grippers, right? And so we made a plate, and we put a hole in it, and it falls. 
Yeah, awesome. I mean, yeah, I'm surprised more teams haven't done something like that. You see teams using a lot of like one-way latches and funnels and this and that, but I mean, it just it works every time. So now that you have freight in your scoring gripper, where does it go next? How does your extension system work? What degrees of freedom do you have there? You know, did you go through any changes this season with it? Oh, yeah. Um, we went through a ton of changes with uh, all of this. So first off, this was not always grippers. We had a legit box. That's what we call it, our scoring box. Um, um, but that was super imprecise, so we changed to grippers with a linkage. Um, so once it's in our scoring grippers, um, on Shared Hub, it'll immediately grab and flip out, uh, totally automated because we have a sensor in our intake. Um, and then for uh, Alliance Hub, we just have, uh, it'll know that it dropped it and it'll grab them, but it won't extend until we click it. And then we use our elevator and our mini elevator to extend to whatever level we want on the Oh, hub. wow. And, you know, did you guys have this whole elevator and mini elevator set up all the way since day one, or was this something you added later? No, so the elevator was always there, but the mini elevator got added right before Worlds. Okay, um, yeah. yeah, excellent. And, you know, uh, another thing that I think is really interesting is going on to your team shipping element. You guys don't have, like, one mechanism to do it, but actually two. So can you talk about, like, you know, why do you have two? Did you have one and then decided to add the other? You know, what's behind it? So we knew the second we saw a tape measure, okay we're gonna need that we want to do that so we spent um, some solid time on this and then we realized that it's gonna be a lot faster if we have an arm or something to pick it up and so many teams had so many simple mechanisms uh, and we were trying to figure out a where to fit a little simple mechanism to cap on this robot and we simply added a servo and a tiny arm and another position in our tele -op. yeah awesome I think that's a really fantastic overview of your hardware I'm sure there's just so much to you know delve into more on this robot but let's move on to the software you guys have really incredible autonomous programs really consistent tele -op automations do you want to talk a little bit about how you get them and you know what went into making those happen sure so um, basically in autonomous we just use our driving coders to localize the robot um, since it's just a simple path we've just been using our driving coders and a, an algorithm that we use to ramp down um, proportionally um, as well as that we have two IR sensors on the robot on either side and those let us detect the white line when we're leaving the warehouse in Autonomous so that we know where to stop and deposit the freight. Awesome, yeah, and then what about teleop automations? How do you like decide which teleop uh, aspects do I want to automate? And, like, how much do I automate and things like that? Uh, mainly what we do is we basically decide where we can put sensors and beyond that where we, um, where we would really use the sensors that we put on. For example, um, in our scoring box, we could have put a sensor uh, in the scoring box, but what we decided to do instead was use the sensor that we have in our intake to um, just detect when the freight leaves the intake and that's when we know that the freight is loaded. Yeah, excellent. Uh, and what do you guys think is like the biggest piece of advice you would have for teams that are looking to have performance like yours next year? Sensors. Sensors and keep it simple and iterate a lot. All right. A lot. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think those are three points that can be taken very far into a team season. Again, technical difficulties, thank you so much. I'm sure everybody has been waiting to hear more about your guys' robot. And now that MTI is over, you know, ha having the chance to interview you guys and really learn about everything is just so amazing. Again, reporting for First Updates now, I'm a boss. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support first teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.